Hello and welcome to The Lowdown. It is The Lowdown, it just looks a bit different. We've now got the proper big highlight show that's on the telly and this is like the shorter, compressed, best bits version, right? So enjoy. Bath played Quinns at the wreck on Friday night. Exeter travelled to Brentford to play London Irish. Gloucester travelled to Newcastle. Worcester were at home to Northampton Saints. Sale played Leicester at the AJ Bell. Wasps were at home to Saracens. First up, it's Friday night lights at the Recreation Ground Bath, where the home side have won one league game in 13, and they face the current champions, Quinns. Piece of cake. Yeah. Quick transfer from Allen, that was nicely done. David on the march again, one man to beat. That pass is a good one. And Dino Lam will race in. And Quinns finally have their point. Esther Hazen finding Nick David on riding that tackle beautifully. So much balance. Here goes Jones, two men outside him. And it goes to Murley. And that's how it's done. Use it. Through the middle goes Hughes. Needs to keep this alive. Hit off the ball, penalty. And Ajomo trying to make something of it. That's a lovely ball to Muir. Bouncing through one tackle. He's away from the second. Will Muir! Well, if Bath wanted a spark, maybe Will Muir's given them that. Nicely done. Spencer whips it away. Wide they go, in they go, it's Muir again! Mark that three, Dixie. That's fine. Allen, no look past to Green, space in front of him, attacking that space so well, draws the man, feeds it on, try time for Hammonds. They've been on the ropes, perhaps even been on the canvas, but today, up on their feet and knocking over the champions. You know, we st started a good, a good uh, game against uh, Queens, and you know, what a way on a Friday night to, to get the win, eh? Nathan Hughes, he's been in Bath about 15 minutes, and he already looks like exactly what they need, doesn't he? Oh, he was brilliant. They needed a big ball carrier, a brute that was going to get stuck mm. in, get into the action, and he did exactly that. He's been desperate to play. Hasn't played in so long. He's probably like, coach, I don't need more than one session. Get me on the pitch. I will deliver. And that's exactly what he did. Yep. And you see the celebration at the end, how much it meant to them. They'll take the win whichever way it comes. Hello and welcome to the Brentford Community Stadium, where today London Irish sitting in seventh in the Gallagher Premiership table. Well, yeah, welcome the Exeter Chiefs just above them in sixth. Inard. The double pump to Woodburn. Very, very clever from Jack Maunder. Very clever indeed. Use the line. Half a metre chase. They look to be over. They are over. They're getting close, Irish. They've got the advantage. Sorry, Pearson wants it. Good Rick Clark. Short. God, how busy is Good Rick Clark. Short the longer ball of the two. Puts it across the face of Rogerson. And Cornish crawls over. Paddy Jackson, Van Rensburg. Out the back to Jackson again on the loop around. Seen the space. Oh, fantastic interplay from London Irish down the right. And it's Stokes who benefits on the inside of Ben Loder. Fabulous from Paddy Jackson. Right, top seat. 18-14 at half-time, 18-14 at full-time. Rubbish second half. Discuss. You would think that, but ask any of the 11,000 that were there and they'll tell you they enjoyed it start to finish. It had everything. It was physical. It was attritional. You had power tries. You had skillful tries. You had two teams really going hammer and tong at each other defensively. Loads of jackal turnovers as well. I think Exeter, probably a few too many errors, made the game difficult for them. But for Irish, they probably needed a win in that fashion. Straight up to the northeast for Newcastle Falcons against Gloucester. Now, this game's kickoff was delayed by four hours because of bad weather, because of a storm. I'm told they called it Storm Topsy Ojo because it started off quite aggressively and ultimately ran out of steam. Enjoy. Hastings has a look back the other way. Oh, he very nearly snuck his way through. Taken on by Fraser Balmain. Very narrow. The Falcons in defence. Mike Brown just coming to shut the door. Ruskin, twisting, turning, scoring. Try, stop it. 
all back. Ball there to be won, and it is by Robinson. Oh, he's bounding down the wing, and then the mighty man, and the run from Radwan, and Sonic the Hedgehog rips over the line. Hastings in, ball still there, and now it's in the hands of Carreras. Oh, what a start to the match. Second advantage offside. Ackerman with help by Reed, and then the charge for the line and the score. And it's the skipper. Conan goes for the big war. Hey, it's picked up brilliantly. Oh, that's a scorcher. Short advantage on the 22. It was uh, Balmain who kept it alive, and 12 trees finding some space, and then Thorley screaming over, and it's the bonus point try. Oh, here we go. Oh, off he goes, Lewis Reese Samit. He's creating mayhem oh. all on his own. I'm not oh. sure anyone's going to stop him. That is amazing. We've had the win today. And now we've got Reese Lightning again. It's a topsy, a good win on the road for Gloucester. Newcastle, admittedly, not in brilliant form, but the Cherry and Whites are going very nicely, aren't they? They look like they, they look like they love their work. They do, and they're looking like a George Skippington team, well drilled, well orchestrated. Moving out wide, Adam Radwan, Lewis Reese, Samet. Who's faster? Radwan. You reckon? That's a complete guess, but I'm going with it and I'm sticking with it. How good was Lewis Reese Samet's try? He was brilliant. He needed that as well. That was a big turning point. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, because he hasn't actually been really doing it, has he, this season? He hasn't really hit the levels we saw him hit last season. Yeah, yet, just he? a little bit. So maybe he needed a bit of time out of the team, you know, to just come and rediscover himself. But that was a big moment and that was huge for Gloucester. Right, off to six ways where Worcester Warriors have just had Steve Diamond put in as director of rugby. Welcomed, if that's the right word, the Northampton Saints. Get out, Christian, Referee get says out. it's still a maul. Judge has to get out of the way. Where's the ball? There it is for Alex Mitchell. Mitchell goes to Hutchinson. Step from the centre. Eventually he's snuffed out, but they've gone over the try line. <coughs> once, Alex, once. Worcester no down change, to 14 men. <coughs> Same mole. Well, the choreography a little bit better this time from Northampton. They're up to the try line, and they have the score. A second try for Northampton. Balls out. Mitchell through the gap, and Mitchell looks around him and sees no one. And Alex Mitchell has scored the third try for Northampton. Is this the moment? We're up to the hour. The power of the scrum, there's a penalty advantage, it's a free hit here. Bellano chooses to go himself. Or rather happened in slow motion though, but they're within two metres. Edging their way closer, just one or two flecks of plastic. Worcester think they've got there. Ian Tempest agrees. Worcester still in the match. And it's Ashley Beck, what a step from Beck, and Beck gets a try. He celebrates his 50th appearance for Worcester. Ball. Finds ribbons. Over. <coughs> Clear mall. Same mall. Fisher's got it. In amongst those jerseys, now a try here for Northampton. Shirley would kill off the comeback. The referee's playing a penalty advantage, but they might not need it. And there, it hits the line. So the try is confirmed. Northampton have their fourth. It's a topsy. Steve Diamond's coming to Worcester, and he's told us this is going to be a team with more aggression, more edge. We're probably asking too much too soon to see a team rejuvenated and rebuilt, aren't we? He's only been there five minutes. Yeah, always going to take time. It's going to be tough in their first outing to see this team transformed into what Steve Diamond wants. But that will come. Look at what he did at Sale. Look at what he does everywhere he goes. Right, now their attack, Northampton's attack, when it's really on it, when it gets cooking, it is beautiful to watch, isn't it? Oh, that's it. When they're good, they're very good. And in Alex Mitchell, they've got a scrum half playing so well, buzzing around all over the place, creating opportunities, creating space. And Rory Hutchinson in the midfield, gliding. He is 
so good to watch. He's silky, he's smooth, he's got distribution, but he's such a good balance runner as well. When those two boys are playing well, Northampton looking really good side. I always imagine myself playing against these guys. You know, you dream at night and you think you still got it, you still do a job. And I watch Alex Mitchell and I think, nightmare, nightmare in boots. It, has there ever been a time in this league where we've had more brilliant scrum halves in the league at once? I mean, what a collection. Like the depth chart is stacked at the minute with yeah. England. I mean, I was surprised. I had to remind myself that he was unlucky not to make the squad for the Six Nations because mm. he's got such talent ahead of him. But I wouldn't be surprised to see him back in a white shirt very soon. He's a class player. Three weeks on from falling to Wasps in Coventry, their first defeat of the season. Their first in 17 matches. How quickly can they get back into the Premiership saddle? And AJ McGinty for the 100th time in a shark shirt. Matt Scott's in there pushing for all his worth. So is Wigglesworth and Leicester have scored. This is a sale scrum. And Dan Dupree. Part of an unchanged four, five, six, seven, and eight for them today. Inside centre is Rohan Janssen van Rensburg. And then the prayer and James, and it's opening up, and there's a huge opportunity which James takes for himself. Made back well by Visa. Oh, that's very nicely done. Scott involving himself, and here's the run from Porter. Real strength, real strength. Oh, my goodness. He has supermanned his way over. More. And taken by Diaga. And Ashman rolls back round. Oh, and Curry goes through. Where on earth did he find that open door? Score of the next try feels like a significant scorer. And Janssen van Rensburg and now James and then the chase for the line for Reid who is quick and he scores. Oh, this feels like a really significant moment in the match. All the way through for Visa. An even bigger South African. Diaga made sure of that. And here's another big South African. Here's Dupree galloping away, giraffing away. And this match has been turned on its head. Once more, bats to the weight, Simon McIntyre bending his back to try to repel this. He's done a reasonable five. job initially, but Leicester still moving the boots, still moving towards the line, and this is looking ominous. Try, try, try. And the try scored again by Julian Montoya. So for the lead, A.J. McGinty. <laughs> Raise voices, shots ahead. Six minutes to go. Oh, they're going again, and the charge for the line, and very nearly there, and Roebuck scores! A Sunday afternoon switch around for the Sale Sharks. Round 14 sees these two stalwarts of the top flight do battle once again, as Wasps entertain Saracens. Thank you. Hold it, oh, stay! Watson uses the aerial route, and that one very nearly won back. Play on, says the referee, at the back of the hand, brilliantly to a dog woo. They have numbers here, and it should be a run-in. The opening tray comes for Wasps. Delayed pass, two on one, surely in the corner this time. Held up just short, helped on its way again, and touchdown by Lewington. Advantage, okay. They have an advantage coming once more, and well, a yellow card. I should imagine is not too far away. They break for the line, and Wilson Croft is over. Four minutes to go. Ball bobbles around, Robson to the pass for the try! Down there, short side, Tompkins deserves one, scores one. No losing bonus, if he gets it, they do at least pick up one. 
That is a fine kick under pressure from Alex Lazowski. Final score here, Wasps 26, Saracens 20. And despite neither Leicester Tigers nor Saracens having won at the weekend, they still sit first and second respectively at the top of the log. Exeter Chiefs and London Irish conveniently for us at least swap positions in 6th and 7th. And Bath are still 13th of 13, but there is one more win in their win column. Thank you so much for joining us. See you next week.